In response to my Oscar-nominated Cavaliers video, a number of people asked me about my opinions on the non-Cavalier mounted units in Engage, namely Fagato, Bunet, and Mavier. While I fully admit that I don't have as in-depth opinions or knowledge about the use of these characters, I'm gonna give the people what they want, but before we dive into the other horse boys, I do feel like I need to give a small correction. I said Leone was a bad unit, and I have no idea what was going through my head at that time. Leone has point-blank folly and a bow boon. I, I don't know that much about Three Houses Benda, but even I know that she's a good unit. Uh, lumping her in with Lauren's is, quite frankly, absurd. I guess my main point about Cavaliers being bad in... Uh, three Houses is that the map is designed in such a way that very often being horse mounted is just a really big disadvantage. Your movement gets cut by like half of the part two maps and uh, maybe even more than that. Anyway, I'm sorry for all of the Leone slander. I love her as well and I recognize that she is a good unit and I was being a dumb. Now let's move on to engage. First horse boy. Fogato. Fogato's an interesting one. His personal class Cupido is a variant of Bow Knight trading some strength for magic and changing careful aim into back at you. Both skills are kind of worthless, but I'd still rather have careful aim than back at you. If only because hit plus 40 is a huge swing, even though the trade-off is so bad that you're probably never going to use it. His starting strength is almost always going to be worse than a trained Etie or Alchrist, especially if you factor in Alchrist's personal skill of Get Behind Me. And we're at the point in the game where you can buy up to 6 second seals, so if you really want an archer on a horse, you can just reclass Etie or Alchrist into that. However, I would argue that Fogato is still the best of these three archers, and that is because of the previously mentioned focus on magic. While Fogato primarily focuses on strength, he is a bit of a hybrid unit, and he has a respectable 9 magic and 30% magic growth as a level 1 Cupido. And notably, 25% of that magic growth comes from his personal growth rates, so if you wanted to send him into Sniper or Warrior, he would still maintain the majority of that magic growth. The reason why I find this ability to go hybrid more valuable than the overkill strength of Etie or the Luna get behind me combo of Alchrist is that the Radiant Bow is absolutely nuts. At base, its might is 19, and each level of forcing increases that by 1, for a grand total of 24 at plus 5. And even if you don't have the silver to go all the way to plus 5, a respectable plus 3 forge with a 22 might magical weapon that can deal effective damage to flyers is nothing to snuff your nose at. This is particularly useful against wyverns in the mid game because they have lower resistance than they do defense. Even with her overkill strength growth, Etie can potentially struggle to one round these and if your archer isn't one rounding flyers, I'm not really sure why you're deploying a bow unit. Alchrist, on the other hand, relies on getting a Luna and a Critical, the chances of which is pretty low in the mid game, even if you forged him a killer bow. This also means that Alchrist can't reclass to Warrior or Bow Knight if you want to have backup or mounted utility, since Luna is tied to his personal class. The biggest downside of Fagato is the bane of all hybrid units. By focusing on both strength and magic, he doesn't excel in either. If your team desperately needs a physical bow user, a trained Etie or Alchrist will probably do better, and if your team exclusively needs a magical bow user, then a trained Anna or a reclassed mage is probably better at this role. Still, if you don't feel like training a villager unit like Anna and want to leave your mages into tome classes, then Fagato makes a fine filler unit for the mid game, and you can always replace him in the end game once his stats start to pale in comparison to the rest of your team. I know a lot of people don't like using units in the mid game if they don't plan on training them for the end game, but I really do think this is the best way to approach Fagato if you want him on your team. That being said, if you are 100% convinced you want to bring Fagato with you to endgame, I think the best path for him is Warrior. He'll still be worse strength-wise long-term than Etie, and probably worse strength-wise short-term than a trained Etie. But you don't have to struggle with training him from level 4. 
and he can still use the Radiant Bow decently well. Because only 5% of his magic growth comes from his class and the rest is from his personal bases, all you're missing out on is 2 points of base magic, meaning 6 less points of damage to Wyverns. This may cause him to miss some kill thresholds, but on the other hand, the ability to equip a longbow for chain attacks may let other characters hit kill thresholds they wouldn't otherwise. It's up to you which route you want to go. Like I said, I prefer leaving him in Cupido and making him just be a mid-game unit, who I later drop for a filler like Goldmary or Saphir, but if you decide to invest a second seal into him and send him into Warrior, he will turn out fine in the long term. He's not going to be the best unit in your army at any point, but he'll be fine. Horse boy number two, Bunei. I want to preface this by saying that I've never tried using Bunei in Maddening, although I did use him in two separate hard mode playthroughs and he did not impress me. At base, his stats are very similar to a level 1 Great Knight Louie or level 1 Great Knight Jade. He has one less point of strength than the average Lou would have in exchange for five more points of resistance, but res on an armor knight isn't a huge deal anyway. He also has an extra point of speed, but I also don't think this is a huge deal on an armored unit. In comparison to Jade, he has one less point of speed and one more point of defense, but I don't think this is a huge difference either way. He does have significantly more HP than either a Great Knight Louie or Jade would have at level 1, and you do get the benefit of not having to train Louie and Jade in order to get a Great Knight, but I also don't think that a generic Great Knight is especially good to have in the Solm arc. Looking at his personal stats, those don't leave too much to talk about either. Basically any physical unit could reclass to whatever class you want Bunei to be in and probably perform better than he would in that role. There are two niche roles that I hear suggested for Brunei pretty often, and I don't think either of them is especially good. The first takes advantage of his personal ability seconds. The idea is to inherit favorite food from Celica, and then use the leftovers and get a second copy of leftovers from seconds in order to proc favorite food and refill your engage meter. Through this, you could get access to powerful engage attacks more often than you normally would. This is especially helpful with Edelgard because if you use Raging Storm, you can immediately deplete the engage barrier in order to proc favorite food again so that you can use Raging Storm and Houses Unite again. There's a couple of downsides to this. The first and most obvious is that it is incredibly RNG dependent, so it's not Iron Man safe and probably not even safe in a non-Iron Man unless you are heavily abusing RNG using the Rewind Crystal. The second is that Selka doesn't come back until after chapter 20. Uh, this is ridiculously late in the game, and because Bunei can't get favorite food from her before she leaves, it's really just, like, not good. That said, I don't think anyone who's proposing this is doing it seriously. It sounds more than anything like a meme build, and, I mean, meme builds are incredibly fun. So if this is how you want to use Bunei, go for it. Just know that it's not going to come online until chapter 21. And even then, it's unlikely to be terribly reliable. The second suggestion that I see thrown up fairly often is that he could be the center of a so-called cavball strategy. For those who are not aware, if you have Lucina on a horse-mounted unit and she uses Bonded Shield, instead of the standard 80% success rate, it has a 100% success rate on other horse-mounted units. The idea behind the cavball strategy is to get five powerful but potentially frail mounted units, send them forward and activate Bonded Shield, and allow them to delete the enemies on enemy phase. Enemies will attack them but deal zero damage as a result of Bonded Shield, and it is 100% reliable because they are all horses. The reason Bunei is often suggested as the perfect center for a cavball strategy is that he has supports with a lot of units who like being in mounted classes. He can support Alir, Alfred, who has a personal mounted class, Chloe, who could potentially go into something like Royal Knight for magical damage, Jade, who wants to be in Great Knight if you don't bench her, Kagetsu, who can make basically any class work, and so you might as well put him in Paladin or Bow Knight if you want, Fagato, who has a personal class of Cupido that we went over in the previous section, Pandreo, who can benefit from Mage Knight, Marin, who starts out as a Wolf Knight, Jean, who can make basically any class work, Anna, who is decent as a magical bow unit in Bow Knight, and Mavier, who starts out as a royal knight and could potentially go into other classes that I will talk about in the next section. 
While being on a horse isn't the ideal path for all of these units, notably Chloe probably does not want to be on a horse, and Marin does benefit from a reclass, although I maintain that keeping her in a wolf knight for the mid game is beneficial short term. A lot of them are perfectly fine as horse units, and for some of them it is the ideal class for them. Since Bune would be adjacent to everyone in the Cav Ball and therefore providing support bonuses, making him into the center sounds like a natural fit if you want to do this strategy. However, I think it's ill-advised. The reason for this is that Bune is in the Critical Focus support group, which gives at A rank support, plus 10 hit, plus 6 crit, and plus 5 dodge. I personally do not think that these bonuses are particularly impactful, and I especially don't think they are worth giving Lucina to an otherwise subpar unit, or even fielding that unit to begin with. Personally, when going for a Cav Ball strategy, I like to put Lucina on a Wolf Knight, probably either Amber or Marin, so that I can benefit from the poison on chain attacks and the plus speed benefits. I also think it's worth noting that instead of a Cav Ball strategy, you have the option to go for a Flyer Ball strategy, which is the same thing except for with flying units instead of mounted units. I personally prefer this to Cav Ball, but even if you are going for Cav Ball, I don't see any reason why Gune as a center is something you want to go for. The trade-off of having to field and give a valuable ring to a subpar unit is not worth the benefit of getting some minor support bonuses. I personally don't think this would even be the case if he had the best support group, which in my opinion is the hit focused one, but the critical focused one is downright terrible in the benefits it gives. Overall, I think Bunet is going to maintain the pattern of the second mounted unit I talk about being horrible, because I really don't see any reason why you would deploy him other than being a filler unit in the soul mark, and since the soul mark notoriously has so few deployment slots, there's really not a reason to deploy a filler unit. Horse boy number three, Mavier. Mavier is a very interesting unit to analyze. He joins extremely late in the game, but also at the same time that your deployment slots per map go up by two. So it's very likely that you're going to be able to find room for him on your team. His stats are also interesting. He's a hybrid character, so he suffers from not focusing on either strength or magic, but his strength and magic are still passable on their own. He starts out as a Royal Knight, which is not the greatest class in the world, and you probably want to reclass him as soon as you are able to. As for what class to send him in, there's a couple of different options. The most level 0 one is to send him Griffin Knight. This costs him a couple of points of magic, but improves him in almost every other way, and notably, he is able to reclass into Griffin Knight during the preps of chapter 22, so long as you purchased a second seal for him. This is something that can't be said for any other class because he only has staff and lance bonuses, and you do not have the opportunity to train him with emblems in chapter 21 or before chapter 22 starts. The biggest benefit that Griffin Knight offers is Flight. Because Mavia has a boosted staff proficiency, this means he reaches B staff in Griffin Knight, giving him access to movement staffs while flying. This is a niche that he shares with Pandreo, Ivy, Hortensia, and Linden. So if you just want a flyer with movement staff access, you have other options. Still, it is notable that he has this ability and that he can reclass into it in Chapter 22. Another potential option for him is to go into Martial Master. Arts are pretty powerful thanks to the inherent Brave effect and the fact that you can forge them to get double benefit out of forging benefits. Unfortunately, since they rely on a formula that takes into account both magic and strength, most units cannot make good use of them. Because Mavier is a hybrid unit, he has decent magic and decent strength, so if you send him into Martial Master, he can make good use of your forged arts. When combined with the damage boosts from things like the Erica Emblem or forging and engraving some arts, this can lead to him dealing massive damage. If you haven't seen it, there is a meme video of a level 1 Jean one rounding the final boss in maddening mode thanks to forged arts. The downside of course is that this is a player phase exclusive thing, but most of the good builds at this point in the game in Madden are going to be doing everything on player phase as opposed to enemy phase, so I don't think that's too much of a downside. It's worth noting as well that if you don't have the bomb fragments to spend on getting Mavier extra weapons, you can get him to a B support with a Leer for arts, 
by spamming Somniel activities and gifts, such as the stones you get in Somni's Grotto. This is particularly valuable if you spent a lot of bond fragments to give multiple units dual assist plus or canter plus or other late emblem skills. I don't think it's that difficult to get him to be support in a single Somniel if you focus on max friendshipping him in that one Somniel session. That said, I personally think the best build for Mavier is to send him into Bow Knight and allow him to grab the Radiant Bow. Chapter 23 and Endgame in particular have some very difficult to kill Wyverns, and so having a high magic Radiant Bow user is super helpful. Although, the high magic on the Radiant Bow is going to be good against a lot of enemies, not just Wyverns. This is once again a player phase focused build, but it doesn't require as much heavy investment into Erica. And the only forge you need is a Radiant Bow, which honestly, I think most teams benefit for 102 forged Radiant Bows anyway. It is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. There's not too much else to say about this that I haven't said about Fagato's Cupido build. Just high magic damage and effectiveness against flyers is very good, and you get this on Mavier with little investment. While it's possible that a trained Anna would have more magic in him than Bow Knight, again, if you don't feel like training Anna, or heck, even if you do and you just want a second Radiant Bow user, I feel like this is a really good option. Also, hilariously, he has a higher magic cap in Bow Knight than Anna does. I don't think this will come up too often because he needs to get 5 more points of magic in order to cap it out, but it is kind of funny that the late game Radiant Bow user has a higher cap than the early game trainee villager Radiant Bow user. If you haven't tried using Mavier as a Bow Knight, I highly recommend it. It's incredibly fun. Hey, this is Post Recording Danny here with a very quick addendum. After recording the initial portion of this video, I tried Mavier as a sniper and I actually like that better. It requires you to give him the Lin Emblem, which again, very competitive emblem, but if you are willing to give Mavier the Lin Emblem and, and potentially inherit Draconic Hex, then him as a sniper can be extremely useful for warp skips or Lin skips or however you want to skip the last portions of the map. I personally do not like playing chapters 23, 24, and 25 honestly, so this is super good for me. He only loses one point of magic as well, although if you are going to be playing the maps just like as a vanilla play as opposed to trying to skip them, I think Bow Knight has merits because you get the cavalry movement and potentially can do like cav bonuses with Sigurd or something if you care about that. But uh, Astro Storm 20 range with a high magic on a Radiant Bow, you gotta try it. Honorable mention, Klan. I'm putting this one at the end as an honorable mention because while Klan does not start as a mounted unit, he is the only mage who canonically goes Mage Knight thanks to his weapon proficiencies and swords. That said, I don't think he offers anything particularly special as a Mage Knight, and you could pretty easily get the same results by reclassing another magically focused unit such as Anna or Pondreo into Mage Knight. You trade a little bit of magic and staff access for a significant upgrade in speed, especially when you take into account Chaos Style and access to a physical weapon. Even if you're not a unit who has particularly good strength, you can use the Leaven Sword, Hurricane Axe, or Flame Lance in order to break enemies, although obviously the Leaven Sword is better than the Flame Lance and especially Hurricane Axe for this. Overall, I think it's a pretty solid option, although personally I prefer sending my magical units into Sage, if only so that I can use Mystical Bonus Corrin for fire tiles. As for Clan specifically, yeah he makes a good Mage Knight, but he struggles in the same way that Alfred does in that Engage really does not like the early game growth units. If you raise him, he'll turn out fine, but that takes away some experience resources from other units who, in my opinion, are more worth raising. In particular, Chloe, Louis, and potentially even Etie. Anyway, that's it. That's the video. Um, let me know if there is anything you think I missed, or if there's any fun builds for these characters that you would like to suggest to me, or other commenters. Uh, bye bye